Hey friend, welcome to Self Transformed, a podcast dedicated to transforming your health in less time and guilt-free through the power of habit hacking. This isn't your typical wellness podcast, friend, so hang on tight. I'm your host, Emily Nichols, habit and fitness coach and Taco Tuesday enthusiast. (laughs) Hey, I know the struggle is real when it comes to taking care of you. As a busy working mom myself, my clients and I have felt physically and emotionally drained, but lacked the time and confidence to actually make ourselves a priority. Plus, all the health advice out there is so confusing and overwhelming, right? Redefining what true health really means paired with habit strategy has been the key to empowering my clients and even myself to finally create a consistent, healthy lifestyle that doesn't feel hard or like just another thing on your long to-do list. I'm now on a mission to equip you with these same sustainable habit hacks and affordable tools to help you reset your habits in any season of your life in order to help you thrive. So if you're ready to habit hack your health and create your transformation together, then let's do this. You're listening to episode 178 of Self Transformed. Hey friend, welcome back to the show. I hope you're having a great day. I'm proud of you for showing up. I know this time of year, you know, this is the week of Thanksgiving. You may have things coming up. I'm making some fun desserts this week. Um, Not an apple pie, which you'll learn more about um, (laughs) um, in this conversation today with my friend Jesse. Um, I've set a little boundary for myself. You'll learn more in this episode that I know this time of year can be really busy and even just showing up, like if listening to the podcast every week is part of one of your habits and of your routine. I know for me, sometimes it's hard to fit in time to listen to my podcast. So if you're in the shower, in the car, folding laundry, doing dishes, fixing dinner, that's usually when I listen to podcasts or out on my daily walks. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And I'm so proud of you for continuing that habit. You got to show up however you can right now. It may not be like full out intensity or the flow like you like it to be. I know you're getting a lot of things put on your calendar, like holiday parties. And not only you're being stretched thin, like going places, but also I feel like our mental capacity is spread a little thin this time of year too, because you know, I'm getting texts from family members. Oh, what do the boys want for Christmas? Oh, I got to think about putting the Christmas decorations up. Oh, what are my kids? What's my son's teacher going to want um, for Christmas? I got to make a Christmas list. I got to do this. I got to do that. So deep breath. <laughs> you got this. Whatever you can do right now, it's going to be really important for you to show up however you can to take care of yourself. So you are able to be present, to truly be grateful for this time of year and not feel like you are running around with your hair on fire. <laughs> So if you need some tools to help you do that, as I mentioned last week, the new transformation shop is open. I'm adding new tools um, every week over the next few weeks as the shop has opened. It's just a lot of really great affordable tools that will help you stay on track with your healthy habits. So they have just basic habit trackers, a habit inventory to see where your time is going so you can stack and track your habits or I have specific logs and trackers on there just for your three fundamental needs. So trackers around uh, food freedom, movement, and mindset. That's all you'll find on there. There's going to be some mini workshops being added and some fun things we're going to be doing with the shop in the new year. I can't wait to share it with you. But I've created so many tools over the year. I, years I wanted to give you some affordable ways to do that. I started my Black Friday sale early. You can get the fundamental needs bundle now. Um, It's on the main page. You can check that out. But when you check out, you will get the Habits That Stick starter kit for 50% off. So fun. That is just my basic mini course on basic habit strategy. It's going to teach you how to use habit strategy. Okay. And that's over like $230 worth of value for like 40 bucks for everything. It's pretty amazing if I do say so myself. And you'll notice with every product in the transformation shop, when you get that emailed to your inbox, when you open it up, there's a video from me giving you a free mini training with your download to kind of explain how's the best way to use this having habit strategy in mind. Okay. So it's just transformationshop.co. It's linked in the show notes where you go check it out and let me know what you think. Black Friday sales are continuing this week as well. I'm going to start with my programs and courses tomorrow. 
which is the 22nd. I can't believe this month is like almost over. That's crazy. I'm going to share some really exciting news, some transformations, if you will, happening um, with my programs and courses as well. More on that tomorrow, but I'll have a special bonus episode kind of just explaining the client exper- experience working in, with me in the self-transformed brand and how I want to best serve you moving forward. So I can't wait to share that with you. So stay tuned, subscribe, get all the notifications, listen in when you can. I'm trying to make these um, episodes as short as possible this time of year as well, because I know you're busy. You're busy. You got to get it in, get it out. Okay, let's talk about today's episode. I am so excited to have my friend Jesse Larson of the Positively You podcast on the show. Oh, I'm so excited. I was on her show a few weeks ago. You can go check it out. I'll link it in the show notes for you. But I consider myself a pretty positive person. People, I don't know if you would consider me that just listening to the show or or if we know each other in real life or if you've seen me like in my Instagram stories, I like to have fun. I like to dance around and be silly and I like to encourage and inspire other people. I actually say at the end of every live class I coach at Orange Theory, we take a big deep breath in, we exhale out. And I always say, take this positivity with you and pass it on. And I truly mean that in my heart of hearts, because usually after a workout, you feel pretty darn good about yourself. Even if it was hard and you struggle, you're like, man, I, I'm proud I did that. And let me share a little maybe secret with you. I may come across as a very positive person on here, and I want to motivate you to do the same. But really, it's something I have to really work on. It's something I have to really work on. I can be really not nice to myself sometimes or if things aren't going my way. I'm just like, ugh, I'm in a mastermind with a, with a few other ladies who have similar podcasts. And, you know, we are on a roller coaster of entrepreneurship sometimes and we're chatting and I'm just like, oh my gosh. I'm usually getting ready to get my period when I'm like that in all honesty. <laughs> but, you know... I'm not positive all the time. It's something you have to work on. It's something you have to make a habit. And you know, mindset is one of the pillars I teach on other than movement and food freedom. And choosing to be positive falls under that, okay? So you have to choose to be positive and make that a habit. Now, we will talk about toxic positivity in this episode. I know that means like being all like sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns when really like things are like really crappy right now to be truly transparent. And there can be a duality that we'll talk about as far as sometimes there's something really negative, really hard happening in your life, but we try to find some small little bit of positivity. Doesn't mean we don't validate those feelings. It means we don't ignore those feelings, but it also means we don't live there and go to a deep, dark place where that compounds and we can't get out of there, right? Positivity is contagious, but so is negativity. So the main objective of today's episode is to really help you choose positivity and work on being positive and not letting that negativity compound. And Jesse has some really great um, advice, some great habit tips to help you create more positivity in your life. So let me tell you all about Jessie of the Positively You podcast. So her goal is to help encourage and empower women to live their best lives through short pep talks, in-depth interviews with guests like me. She has amazing other guests too. Um, Or just a quick girl chat. Jessie gives you the tools you need to make positive changes in your life. She also coaches, hosts in-person events, loves speaking, and she has her own podcast production company, which aims to get more powerful voices out in the world. She's actually connected me with some other fun ladies, which I love. So you can find her on Instagram, on our website. I'll put all those links in the show notes for you. I want you to get a pad, a paper, and a pen, or open up your notes section, take some voice notes on your phone, because there's a lot of nuggets of wisdom in this show about being positive from Jesse. So make sure you stick around to the end of the episode. As always, I will share the cliff notes, my top three takeaways for you. So let's get into it. I can't wait for you to hear this conversation with me and Jesse Larson. All right, gang. Thank you uh, so much again for tuning in to Self Transformed. I am so excited to have this conversation today with Jesse Larson of the Positively You podcast. Jesse, thanks so much for coming on the show. Oh, Emily, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. 
I cannot wait to dig into this conversation. But Jesse, the first question I ask every guest is, what comes to mind when you hear the phrase self-transformed? Oh, that is such a good question. And the first thought that pops into my head immediately is a lot of hard work. Mm. A lot of hard work and really a lot of probably awareness and answering questions that you maybe A, didn't want to ask yourself in the first place and didn't want to answer. I think self-transform takes a lot of courage and a lot of bravery to want to look at the parts of yourself and determine, you know, what you want to keep, what you maybe don't want to keep, what you want to change, what you want to ditch, parts of you that you need to forgive. Like there's so much that goes into self-transformed that to sum that all up, a lot of work. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it is a lot of hard work and it's all those pieces you just mentioned, right? And that's uncomfortable and change Mm -hmm. is uncomfortable, but it's also very beautiful once you get through like the hard part, right? Oh, absolutely. Totally. Well, let's talk about you a little bit more. I want to hear more about maybe your own transformation story that led you into really who you are and what you do today. Yeah, absolutely. So I would describe myself growing up as like a sunshine person, like on the color code test, you know, there's like the red, blue, white. I was like yellow, a hundred percent, like the glass is always half full kind of a person. And then, you know, I became an adult and like adult reality started hitting you. And it was kind of like, not calling me out, but calling me out to be like, are you really this positive? Or like, what if we throw like this hard thing at you? And what if we throw this hard thing at you? And that's when I kind of had to like, take a look at myself and be like, oh, has it just been really easy and like a non bumpy road for me? Or do I really have what it takes to like actually find the good and find the glass half full and to look for those things. And that really was a part that I had to kind of like look at myself and intentionally be that person, not just be that person like by default. And, you know, there's with anything in growing up, we're we're thrown so many curveballs and so many life things, whether it's, you know, things with your parenting and with your children or with your marriage or with your finances or with job loss and that like, enter whatever trial you want, right? Like pick your poison. And in those things, it really was, okay, am I going to let this break me? Or am I going to let this show me some parts of me that I can build, that I can draw on? And I think that's true for all of us where we've lived on default for so long. And then we have to live intentionally and figure out who we want to be. Mm, living on default and then being a little bit more intentional. I love that so much. And that's hard work. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> so much where I was like, can it just be easy? Like, can I just like, I don't know, ostrich, right? Stick my head in the sand and pretend that like every nothing bad is happening and it's all just good and it will go away if I just keep my head down. Right. And being like, no, I actually like this hard thing, if I'm gonna go through it, because I don't have a choice at this point, right? Like circumstances happen to us and situations happen that we don't have choices that we're in them sometimes. And so it's saying, you know, okay, fine, I'm going to go through this, but if I'm going to have to do it, then I want to get X, Y, Z out of it. Like I'm going to learn something. Then I'm going to come out stronger on the other side. This is going to work for me. Gosh, dang it. (laughs) Yeah. Right. I feel like we've all been through like our own trials and tribulations and we kind of look back and I was like, man, I don't like the way I dealt with that. Or you find yourself now in hindsight and you're like, I am really proud of the way I dealt with that. Like it may have been like a sucky situation, but I made the best out of it and, you know, did the best that we can. It kind of reminds me, I have two boys. I have a 14 year old and an almost 11 year old. And my oldest was actually born um, with a congenital heart defect. And he had open heart surgery when he was eight months old. He had his last surgery a year ago. And I don't know why, but since he was really little, we were just like, okay, these are the cards we were dealt. We can either deal with it and like, one way or we can deal with it like okay we're going to do the best that we can with the cars that we've been dealt and it really helped as he's older now too to be like mirroring that to him as a parent to a child to be like okay like this sucks we can be upset we can be sad but we can also deal with it in a positive way too i love that so much yeah absolutely well and i think you know thinking of my own transformation story, my own growth story but also you listening like when you're thinking of that like the first thing i want to do is just like reach out and like 
give me a hug, <laughs> like past me that went through that, you know, or like whatever and be mm-hmm. like, hey, just a hug for whatever, like not even you did it or that was hard, just a recognition, like recognize yourself for what you're going through or what you've gone through if you're on the other side of it, or especially if you're like in the thick of it, like recognize where you are and just like honor that. Because I think that's so powerful of just like giving yourself pause to stop. Like you said, like when you're in that with your son and having a congenital heart problem, like that's hard. Like for a mom, especially for a first time mom, like as that being your first, like goodness gracious, like, don't you want to just like wrap her up like younger you and be like, you can do this and you did do this. And that that's awesome. I think taking that pause to honor yourself in those moments is very powerful. I love that. Yeah. We don't recognize ourselves very often, right? We're mm-hmm. not like, I'm so proud of me. Like we'll say it to our kids and to like everyone oh, else. Yeah. Like, I'm so proud of you. But how often are we like, I am so proud of me. Not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. Totally. Well, you know, I feel like positivity can be like super contagious. Like you're around someone, you can kind of feel that energy and vibe from them. But I also feel like negativity is like the same way. Mm. So what does really living a positive life maybe look like to you? I think this might be a personal question for everybody, but what does living a positive life look like for you, Jesse? Yeah. Well, I like what you said about it being contagious and how both of those emotions can be contagious. I also think positivity can be triggering and can get kind of a bad rap, right? Like we've all heard of toxic positivity and we've all heard of like just slapping on the rose colored glasses and finding the good. Like sometimes pretending that it's all sunshine and roses and just going immediately to finding the good isn't the most healthy thing to do. Like sometimes actually like sitting there and honoring all of your feelings is the right thing to do or the healthy thing to do or just the survival thing to do at the time. Mm-hmm. So I want to say like I I see if if the word positivity is like a trigger for you, like if you're like, oh, nope, don't even want to hear this, mm-hmm. like to honor that because it's not about just seeing the world through rose colored glasses at all. It's honoring all of your emotions and all of your feelings, being able to feel them, but knowing that overall you want your life to have like a positive tone to it. So that is being able to morph through all of them. And so for me, that's what it is. It's not, you know, I do, I'm an Enneagram nine. I don't know if like, you know, like what that means or anything, but it means that I really don't like conflict. I like everyone to just like be happy. I like seeing all sides of the story, like confrontation and conflict is not my thing. So naturally again going back to like my default is to just live in that like rose colored glasses why can't we all be friends like happy (laughs) kind of environment so for me really living like a positive life is being able to encompass all of it but having it have an overarching like vibe of positivity Mm, I like that and I like how you mentioned like positivity almost gets like a bad rap you know we talk a lot about self-care on this show and sometimes self-care can get a bad rap as Mm -hmm. well like oh it's selfish or it's just indulgent or whatever and like you mentioned toxic toxic positivity is such like a trigger word right now for people and like you mentioned I think it's totally and I think it's it's really okay and important that we do live in our thoughts and our feelings and recognize them. But how do we not let that compound where it just snowballs, right? You're like, okay, I don't want to be like too positive. You know what I mean? Like this yes. is a very crazy situation, a negative situation. How do you not let it snowball? Yeah. I think number one is that being aware, like catching yourself in those thoughts because all of us can spiral out of control and that snowball just gets rolling. And like the one bad thing that happened today is suddenly like everything is wrong and the sky is falling and the world's on fire and we're all going (laughs) to die. Right. And so like really being able to be aware and that might be starting with like a journaling practice at the end of the night and just like listing out how your day was and how your emotions were. If you're not a journaling person, like being more in the moment of like, as you're thinking a spiraling thought, catching yourself and being like, whoa, that's dark. <laughs> like, Hold on. Asking yourself, is that true? Mm. Or what else is tr- true? Because right, like it could be true. Like there could be a lot of crap hitting the fan right now. And you're like, yeah, no, it actually is true. Mm. But what else is true? And kind of countering that, right? Because there there can be duality. There can be really awful things happening and there can be really, really good things happening, right? Like I remember a couple of years ago, we had 
kind of a financial crisis. And we were having talks about, do we need to sell our home? Do we need to like make these huge changes? And it was just like these gut wrenching conversations of like, how are we here? But then being like, our marriage is tighter than it's ever been, or our kids are getting along so well together. And we're having like, so like, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. there was so much awfulness on the one hand where I just wanted to cry in the shower, but then I was like, but hold on on the flip side, there's also all of this good. So being able to like honor and acknowledge that like life is full of like opposites and both can survive at the same time. And so just being aware putting a stop to that. But I also think knowing that it is okay to live in those feelings and you can determine the timeline that you want to be in those, right? Like we've all had a bad day and sometimes you're like, snap out of it, snap out of it. And you can't. And like, it just continues rather than I think telling yourself like it is going to be a bad day and I'm going to put on a sad movie and I'm going to just like be in my feels all day today. I'm going to like light the candle and like do all the sad girl things, (laughs) right? Like we know, I don't know if you've ever like I have certain shows or like certain books that I know will just put me into like a melancholy mood. Mm -hmm. And you just like lean into that, like let yourself live there and just know like, this is where I am. Like, and it's okay. It's the awareness and honoring where you're at. Yeah. That awareness piece. I mean, kind of listening to your inner voice and being like, I just need to be in my feelings today. Like I'm usually like that before I start like my period, like going into like my luteal phase. I'm just like, okay, what do I need to honor? What do I need right now? in this, in this feelings that I'm in right now, honoring that, like you said, and then figuring out, okay, next day, what are we going to do to either get out of it or be like, okay, I'm still feeling this way, honor that and kind of take it from there. Just don't let yourself go into where it's like a month long, right? Mm, We talk about that, about that here with habit strategy, where we start a new habit and we're like, okay, if you miss a couple of days, sometimes you'll just throw your hands up and be like, oh, well, I messed up. I can't get back on track. And it's kind of the same way with our own mindset and the way we see negativity or positivity where it's okay to be there. It's okay to miss a day of not like doing this or doing that, but you just can't let it keep going and going and going and going. Okay. I know you've felt this way before too. You start a new healthy habit routine and you find a good flow. Motivation is high, but then life gets in the way and you find yourself in a season of life where that healthy habit routine just isn't working for you now anymore. Ugh, right? I mean, instead of just giving up, come take my free masterclass, The Healthy Habit Reset. You will learn the simple five-step habit change method I only share in this masterclass where I take the overwhelm and confusion out of health and teach you how to reset your habits for whatever season of life you are in with some basic habit strategy. And I know what you're thinking. How long is this going to take? I know your time is precious, my friend. So the masterclass is broken up into just three 10 to 15 minute modules and is available as audio only too. I have a workbook to also help you take action. So it's not going to take up a ton of your time. Check it out for free and let me know what you think at bit.ly slash free reset masterclass. There's a link in the show notes for you as well. I can't wait to see you inside of the reset. Now let's get back to the show. Absolutely. I think one thing that can help with that too is like having a trusted person that you can talk to, Mm -hmm. right? So whether that is a best friend. Or whether that's, you know, a therapist that you go and see and you talk through these feelings, whether that's, you know, a mom or a spouse, like just someone where like you can be honest with them. So they're trusted where you can say like, I am in a funk and they're not just going to be like, okay, well, let's pull you out like that. They can listen, but they can also give you like the tough love at the same time. So Mm -hmm. I think having a trusted person to talk to is key for not like letting that turn into a month. I love some of these habits that you've mentioned, Jesse. I love asking yourself, is this true? Because most of the time it's not. Unless it is, then you honor that. I love talking to someone that you trust as well. What are some other daily habits someone could implement um, to help them live a more positive life? Ooh, I love this question. And if anyone has listened to me before, they might know the first thing that I'm going to say because it's the first one on everything. But I'm going to hold off for a minute. Um, and say, whatever it is that you pick, start small. 
Because I think a lot of times we hit the point where we're wanting change. And when we get to that point, it's usually we're frustrated. It's out of desperation. We've hit some sort of rock bottom where we're just like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And so we want to fill a 180 from what we're feeling now, which means changing all the things. And I know that you know what happens when we change all the things all at once is it lasts for Mm -hmm. not very long and we inevitably fail. And then we feel worse because now adding to the things that we were feeling before, we're now a failure. And so like whatever it is that you pick to implement and to put into your life to have it be more positive, start small, Um, pick one thing. And the one thing that I picked when I was, I was feeling dark, I was waking up. I mean, this was number of years ago, 2018, maybe. I don't know. I was waking up panic attacks all the time. I just sense of dread pit in my stomach. And I was like, Oh, this has got to change. And, you know, I wanted everything to change and I couldn't change everything. But the one thing I could do is I could make my bed. Mm. And that became my goal. Every morning I was going to make my bed and I made it a goal and I made it an entire year of every single day. And there were days where I was in a hotel and I got up and I made that hotel bed because that was the commitment that I had made. And it was so small. It was like, that's not going to change your life. Like that's not going to fix X, Y, Z circumstance that you're in. That's not going to make you lose the weight. That's not going to make your like, right. But it legit did change my life because it was so small that I could do it. I could do it every day. It didn't matter if I was sick. It didn't matter if I had a bad day. It didn't matter if my kids didn't sleep that night. It didn't matter if I was away from home because I could still make the bed. And it gave me proof of like, you can keep a commitment to yourself. You can accomplish something first. You can have this like clean space that you can go to when you need a break, right? Rather than like running up to your room and your room's still a disaster and a mess too. And you can't get away from the chaos. Like I gave myself that gift. It had so many benefits but it was so small that I could do it, that it wasn't this like huge change that I was going to fail at. So that is my first thing I would say. I love that so much. I mean, number one, it's like a small win. It's super simple. We talk about all the time when you're starting a new habit, you know, we try to do all the things at once, but it takes brain power to like start something new. Mm. And I don't know about you, but as a working mom, I don't have a lot of extra brain power sometimes, right? right. All the tabs open in my head and like literally on my laptop, like I cannot open another tab without closing something else out or making it just a small, easy task. So you build up that confidence in yourself, but also keeping a promise to yourself. We are so quick to break promises to ourselves that we would never break to anyone else. I love that so much. Yeah. That's why I love that one so much because it was like, it sounds so silly when you're like, what can I do? I'm like, make your bed. And like, I get eye rolls so many times, but a hundred percent what you said, because there is no brain power. How many times when we want to make a change is that like, okay, if it's a fitness schedule, we have to like either get childcare or make sure the time we can go and make sure we have the clothes and make sure we have the equipment or like, Or we had to Pinterest, right? We want to create the perfect meal plan. Like all of these different things that do take so much brain power, like pulling up sheets and fluffing pillows takes literally no brain power whatsoever. So I know it sounds so simple, but like if you want to change, I don't know, give it a try and see if it works for you. I'm going to tell my husband to do that because we have a rule. Last one out of the bed has to make it. And he's always the last one out. And like, (laughs) it's very sporadic. I'm like, you need to keep a promise to yourself. 2023. He's doing it (laughs) because I'm always the first one up. So I'm, I'm, I secretly made that rule because I was like, last one out of the bed is going to make it. I love it. (laughs) I love that though. But that's a really simple win and something that you could, you know, just compound over time. Like, what else can I do? What else can I do? How else can I make a promise to myself? You know, you mentioned at the end of the day, kind of listing out how your day went. We're in a season of like Thanksgiving and thinking about gratitude, which I think is really important to reflect on. You know, I like using a gratitude journal and I'm wondering, thinking about going into this type of season, how can you be more positive when maybe you're around people that maybe aren't so positive? You know, we're doing family gatherings. Sometimes it's high stress. Maybe you're stressed out. I kind of shot myself in the foot years ago. Like before I had kids, I found this Martha Stewart mile high apple pie recipe. And for 
13 years now I've been making this pie and it's literally like this big, but it stresses me out every Thanksgiving because I'm in there making this pie that's like 20,000 pounds of apples and peeling it. But, you know, how can we influence others around us to be positive and kind of really focusing on that attitude of gratitude this time of year? Ooh, that's such a good question because yes, holidays are so fun, but they also can be like, ah, pull your hair out, right? I think the number one thing, oh, it's such a good question that you're asking about how you can influence others. And I want to like say the opposite of knowing like you can't, you're actually only in charge of you. Mm -hmm. And when you can realize that and like, let it go, And like, that's easier said than done because you just do want to like, be like, but can't you just like, oh, to the fam, like whatever family member, right. Is causing like the stress or, or whatever it is that, that you're trying to maybe positively influence. So knowing that you're really the only one that you can control and, and knowing that also knowing how to protect your peace in those instances, the holiday, like you said, you shot yourself in the foot, like. I mean, you technically don't have to make the pie, right? But, and so deciding like, is that something that you want to continue doing? Is that adding to your experience? Like, does the stress outweigh the pro and the cons, all of those things, like really honoring, again, it's going back to like your inner voice and honoring that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do love, I do love gratitude so much. Um, And especially like as we're in this time of year and heading into like Thanksgiving and all of that. Obviously that's what everyone is talking about. And, but gratitude is one of my top positive practices because it just, it helps you get present. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just even voicing your gratitude out loud. um, There's so many different ways that you can express it. I've done a number of podcast episodes on my own show on the topic of gratitude. So go over there and search gratitude and you'll find a bunch. So but I do, I love, I love this time of year and with gratitude. And if you can pull that into everything that you're doing, more power to you. When I think really authentic gratitude too, like the more you do, not just like surface level stuff, like I'm really thankful for like my house and my health and, you know, like genuine, like authentic, like I am really grateful that I am, I get to move my body. You know, I am really grateful that, you know, I do have a home that, keeps me safe and warm, like really digging deeper into that. And again, just doing it more and more really does build up into a really fabulous habit that can help you like through all seasons, not just Thanksgiving time, right? Oh, absolutely. I actually did an interview with an author. Her name was Gina Hamity and she gave herself a challenge where she wrote a year's worth of thank you notes. So she wrote a hundred or sorry, a hundred, 365 thank you letters in one year. That is so many. And at some point you're going to run out of like things that you're grateful for. Right. (laughs) Like, and, and so she got really creative and that's kind of what I liked about what you said, where she, one month, her theme was people who have made a difference in like my education. And she was writing to past teachers. She was writing to her kids' teachers. She was writing to even like a fitness instructor because that went into it. And then, you know, the next month it was like people in my community, And so she was writing a letter to the kid who bagged her groceries. She was writing a letter to, and she said that it just opened up this magical like portal to her life where suddenly, because she knew she had to write all these letters, she was looking for more opportunities of like, who could I write to? What am I grateful for? And I mean, when was the last time you were grateful for the kid who's loading your groceries into a bag, right? But like it made everything in her life so much like brighter and more colorful because it was just with these lenses of gratitude on. So taking that and, and giving yourself like a different theme, um, something that I've done with my kids before is like five senses. So like being grateful and using like things you see, things you hear, right. And going in it that way, just so it's, it's more intentional and not just my house, my health, my family. Right. I love that so much. And just think how all those people felt who got those thank you notes from her, like next level there. And I love that you're seeking out gratitude 
in the everyday. And that can really benefit other people too. Oh my gosh, that's spreading positivity right there without being Mm. all up in someone else's face. That's for sure. <laughs> Yes, that's for yes. sure. I think of it more of like a like an active gratitude rather than a passive gratitude. Hmm. Because so often with gratitude, we're thinking like past tense and we're like thinking rather than actively living in it. I love that so much. Girl, that is so good. Jesse, where can everyone connect with you and find out more about you? All right. Well, if you like listening like this, I drop a weekly episode on Wednesdays over at the Positively You podcast. I'm on every platform, so just search me there. I also am very active over on Instagram and absolutely love chatting in my DMs. So come on over there. It's positively.jesse on Instagram. And anything else you could possibly need from me is just at jessielarson.com. Awesome. Jesse, thank you so much for this conversation. I hope everyone feels very positive after listening to this because I know I do. <laughs> thank you so much. Jesse, girl. Thank you. Jesse's girl. <laughs> that just slipped out. Jesse, girl. Jess, thank you so much for this conversation. Can you hear me smiling? You bring so much joy and positivity, like genuinely. So I so appreciate that. And I hope you, my dear listener, feel the same way as well. So gang, let's talk about my three big takeaways from this conversation with Jesse Larson of the Positively You podcast. So number one, positivity and negativity can be contagious. I kind of alluded to this at the beginning of our episode together. I think sometimes, like Jesse men mentioned, we have to kind of turn a little internally and recognize your feelings. Recognize your feelings, but don't let it compound, right? Don't let it expand and get bigger and bigger when you are in a negative situation and it's going to affect other people. Have you ever been like in a terrible negative mood at home and like your husband then is too and your kids and you even feel like your dogs are kind of like Ugh, as well too. You know what I mean? Just be aware. We don't want to spiral, right? One of the big questions we've talked about this on the show as well as a habit hack is to when you find yourself in that situation, you're spiraling, you're in that negative headspace. Pause and ask, is this true? Is this true what I'm thinking right now and how I'm viewing the situation? Maybe it is. And you can be like, okay, where can I find some type of positivity in this? Now, I know life is hard. There are some really, really hard things that happen in life sometimes. Trust me, I have been there. And we have to figure out a way to find some type of positivity so we don't spiral and go down that deep, dark negativity hole. Okay, so is that true? Is a really great habit, a really great mindset hack to ask yourself when you find yourself in that situation. Like we also mentioned, there can be, my biggest takeaway number two is there can be duality. Good and bad can happen at the same time. Listen to what you need right now and honor that. A great habit is to find someone who can listen to you or maybe give you tough love. Find someone you can talk to. Sometimes we can't keep it all bottled in, we need to get it out. Maybe one of the ways to get that out is to be like, okay, I need to take action. I need to find some form of a transformation. Maybe you come to my free masterclass, The Healthy Habit Reset, where we take it slow, which is another thing Jesse mentioned. Like when you are deciding, okay, I'm taking action, we need to ensure we're starting small and just doing one small thing at a time. That's why in the master class, we only do one habit at a time over 21 days. And I do check in with you on day 21. Actually, when I did the Healthy Habit Reset live, their 21st day for me to check in with them is this Thanksgiving. So if you went through it with me live um, or earlier this month, expect an email from me Thursday to see how it went. Um, but remember, you are in charge of your own feelings. You're not in charge of what other people. Protect your peace. So when you find yourself in maybe that positive and negative space, you're able to take action and be okay with being you know, in that space. Just don't let it be contagious like we were just talking about. Let the positivity be contagious. And then lastly, very fitting with Thanksgiving being this week, a great habit hack to help you be more positive is to live in gratitude. We'll do a gratitude episode later this week for our habit hack Thursday. It's perfect with Thanksgiving. I'll have a short episode for you that day. That's actually the theme all month in the Habit Hacking Society. We do a theme every month, and we're, this month we're talking about having habits of gratitude, not just you know expressing gratitude, but also how to communicate 
with maybe your love language and receiving gratitude as well. Maybe you don't feel appreciated. One of the habits I've started doing, is, which I've shared with my habit hackers in the in the group, is I've added a notification on my um, computer to take a gratitude break. It's literally like five minutes. I have that trigger set up at the same time every day to let me know, oh, it's time to just sit here, be grateful, be in prayer, meditation, whatever, and focus on what I'm grateful for. Really deep, deep, deep grateful things. Not just like my health, my house, all those things are great, but really, really what I'm grateful for right now. It helps you be present. It helps you feel that positivity, especially if you voice it to someone else. Oh my gosh, doesn't that make you feel amazing too? That's one of the other things we just talked about in this society as well. So friends, I hope you choose to be positive. Make this a habit to work on, right? It can be one of those habits under that mindset tier that we talk about with our fundamental needs and watch what happens because positivity can be even more contagious the more you spread it. And that feels a lot better than negativity, doesn't it? Yes. The answer is always yes. <laughs> so Jesse, thank you so much for having or coming on my show and me being on your show. All the things. If you guys want to go listen to the Positively You podcast, I'll have her website, Instagram, the show, everything linked for you below in the show notes. I'll also have linked how to get to the transformation shop and take advantage of that Black Friday sale. It's going to happen until Friday the 2nd. I can't believe December is almost here. Do you feel like you're saying that right now too? Oh my goodness. So, well, I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you being here. Make sure to stay tuned for tomorrow for a very special Black Friday um, episode with some fun announcements, some sales happening, and also kind of what the programming is going to look like from here on out. And I'll see you later this week as well for Habit Hack Thursday. I'm so grateful for you being here. I'm proud of you for being here. Let's go out in the world and spread a little bit more positivity. Hey girl, real quick before you go, if you want some free motivation texted to you every week to help you have it hack your health, send me your favorite emoji to 773-904-2157 to sign up for my weekly pump up text. I can't wait to catch up with you there. And if you have any quick questions for me or feedback, it's me on the other end. So text me back, friend. And if you love the show, the number one way you can thank me is to leave a rating and review in iTunes. That way more mamas can find the show. Tag me in your Instagram stories at emilynichols22. What you love about the show. Show me your review so I can shout you out. Love and appreciate you, friend. I'll see you next time.